welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I thought that we would do a nice uh, hibernating practice. Uh, this is a time of year where nature starts becoming more and more dormant and uh, animals go into hibernation and rest. So I thought since we're all the same and we're part of the nature, um, let's just do a practice to just kind of allow ourselves to go inward and hibernate and soothe ourselves and nourish ourselves so that we can be better beings out in the world. So we're gonna start with a child's pose, but I, I'm gonna suggest to make it really nice and supportive. So I have a bolster and a blanket here, and I'm gonna uh, put my blocks under this bolster. You can do one block or two blocks depending on you. Usually one block is plenty. And then just kind of move up in front of your bolster so the knees are wide apart, your toes are gently touching. Um, you can, if you don't have a bolster, you can just put, put, you know, put some nice heavy thick blankets or you can just take a, um, a uh, couple of blocks, pile them up right next to each other just like this and then put your blankets on top of the block. This is just so you have some sort of a support or you can take a bunch of like um, throw pillows or big pillows and pile them up on top of them. Um, so come to whatever, however you can find yourself supported. Um, sometimes too, it may help to just have a chair right here, and then you can just put your head on top of the chair. That's really nice too. So let's just go ahead and fold forward. And then you can basically either put your forehead on top of your hand, or you can turn your head to one side and just soften your shoulders for a moment. Really let your belly be supported by your bolster. Let the shoulders move away from the ears. Close your eyes for a moment. This particular pose is such a pose of surrender. Um, and in our Western way of living, surrender tends to be a bad word. We don't like to talk about surrendering, but really uh, surrendering in the Eastern traditions or the wisdoms of the ancients is a way of um, coming into the present moment and recognizing the present moment as the most important of all. So in this present moment is where you can really find perfection and an it's, it's like an act of beauty, act of recognizing yourself and practicing a life-centered present moment awareness. So this is where we wanna just find our bodies. Maybe even if you like to and if it helps, you can become aware of the soles of your feet or maybe your toes touching each other or the top of your feet touching the ground. And then maybe noticing your breath. Notice your natural inhalations. Wherever you notice it, it's fine. Whether you notice the breath at the tip of your nostrils, tip of your nose, or maybe you notice the breath in the chest or the belly or your upper back. Just begin to notice the breath exactly the way it is. And as you notice this moment, also noticing that you can't really take action in the past or even in the future. You can plan for the future or you can kind of revisit the past and notice what you could have done differently. But true action just takes place right now, at this moment. When we 
focus on the past and the present so much, we begin to feel a little powerless because there's really nothing we can do. And as our intentions become more life-centered, more present moment conscious, we become much more powerful. Continue to take nice deep breaths into the belly and exhale. And just feel the support of your structure underneath you. And just notice how feel it, how good it feels to feel that support. giving yourself permission to close your eyes in the middle of the day. What a beautiful, beautiful gift to be able to give to yourself. And as you're ready, gently begin to press yourself up. And then just sit on one side. You can keep your structure um, just like it is. And all you're going to do is uh, bring your legs into a butterfly pose. So let your uh, soles of your feet come towards each other. But I'm going to keep my structure exactly the way it is and just kind of move my feet underneath my bolster so that the soles of my feet come towards each other. Or if that's too much of a you know, disruption, you can just keep your feet separate from each other. Uh, but let your knees open up wide to the side, please. And um, your choice with this structure, again, you can fold forward towards your bolster if you've got it. If you don't have the bolster or and you have blocks, sometimes it also feels good to just pile up your blocks on top of your feet and then place your forehead on top of your blocks. That's a really nice way of um, softening through the pose as well. Or you can just do the same thing with the bolster on top. So it depends on how high you need to be. Um, you can just take the bolster and just kind of put the bolster on top of your feet, just like so, and then rest your forehead on top of the bolster. So wherever you are, just get really comfortable. Drop the head down. Let your forehead rest on something though. So you want to make sure that your forehead is not just dangling or your head's not just dangling. And then now as you come into this pose, you might begin to find more awareness in your backside body. So maybe you feel more of the opening or expansion in the low back. Maybe mid-back, maybe upper back. But again, really send your breath to that space. And as you do, you may even begin to visualize a sense of warm oil just kind of dripping down your spine all the way down to the base of your spine. And that warm oil allows the connective tissues to release it allows the spine to relax and then it allows you to really tap into your sympathetic nervous system and that in combination with the breath lets you find the time to rest. These moments of rest are when we're actually healing and Healing, the definition of healing is returning to memory of wholeness. So essentially, we're all whole as we start, W-H-O-L-E, whole. And allowing ourselves to find that, to get into that memory that we all have 
gives our bodies the opportunity to heal from within. There is absolutely nothing that we need to do. There is absolutely nothing that we need to do. It's just returning to that memory that we are whole exactly the way we are. Finding this sensation of wholeness, being a, this being who is truly and essentially and really whole. We're not broken, we're not in pieces, we're not trying to change anything or fix ourselves in any way, we're recognizing our completeness. One more deep breath into the belly. Feel that exhalation expand into the low back and hips. And then slowly begin to come all the way back up, please. Put your feet flat on the floor so knees are bent. You can remove this structure to the side for right now. Lean your hips back or hands back. And then just kind of windshield wipe your knees side to side, drop your knees over to the left and over to the right and over to the left and to the right. And then next time you come back to the center, put, bring your heels a little bit closer to your buttocks. Turn your hands away from each other so they're nice on the shoulders. Press through the bottom of both feet, lift the hips up into reverse tabletop. You can just kind of move back and forth or side to side like a hammock, whatever feels good, moving back and forth. It doesn't have to be really, really active. You can lift the hips up as much as you want to, but just kind of move slowly and nicely on the shoulders and back and forth. And then lower the hips down, please. Extend both legs straight and massage the ankles and the calves and the knees, rotate the ankles to one side and rotate them to the opposite direction. And then coming on to tabletop pose, cross your ankles, hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Let's move a little bit side to side, just wag your tail a little side to side. Take a nice deep breath in, extend the left leg back behind you, exhale, step the left foot just to the top of your mat, and then move just like this, and again, side to side this way. So move your hips over to the right, move your hips over to the left. If you need to stay in one position to stretch it out a little bit more, you can. Or if you want to do some cat cows here, that would be a nice little option too. So move as it feels good. And then once you're ready, switch side. Extend the right leg back behind you. Step the right foot to the top of your mat. Your hands can rest on top of the block or in front of you. And just either move side to side or cat cows or both or maybe you like to do circles, move the hips as it feels good. Breathe into that low back, low hip area. And then send that right leg back behind you once again, tuck your toes under, lift the hips up into your downward facing dog, and gently begin to pedal your feet side to side to side. Be nice and lovely on your joints. Drop the head down so you feel the back of the neck lengthening. And walk your feet all the way to your hands now. Keep the knees bent. Just let your rib cage rest on top of your thighs as you drop the head down. You can grab opposite elbows and just kind of let the weight of your head fold your forward. 
And as you get here, maybe you like to again go side to side. Just like a, like a nice, beautiful, wavy motion. Nothing too harsh, nothing too uh, structured. Just let the body move organically as it comes to you. And then whenever you're ready, place your hands down again on your mat. Step your right foot back, your left foot back, come back to your downward facing dog, just briefly, and then drop your to your knees. So we're gonna set up our structure for the third pose of our sequence. This time I'm gonna take my blocks and put one just next to the other. You can align them if you want to, or you can have a little space in between the blocks. And then I'm gonna put my bolster on top of my blocks. And then I'm gonna take my blanket and make a little pillow and put it on top of my bolster. So really, you might need to adjust all these as we get there. If you don't have a um, blanket or a bolster, a block is fine or pillows would be fine underneath you. Essentially what we're gonna do this time is turn around. So we're gonna sit on our knees, just like we did with the child's pose. Your toes are touching, your knees are wide apart from each other. Your uh, tailbone is now closer to the structure that you've built. And then you're just gonna go all the way down nice and slowly and come into this pose called saddle pose. So the saddle pose, little different from hero's pose. Hero's pose, the feet are outside the hips. The saddle pose, your toes are actually touching each other. So if you find that your knees are lifting up towards the ceiling, that's completely okay. Let the knees come up. You don't have to press the knees down towards the floor. This uh, structure makes it a lot more accessible. If you really are an, you know, open and you want to practice it without this structure, you can. Um, you can just come all the way down to the floor, but you make sure your toes are still touching, knees are wide apart from each other. This structure just makes it a lot more accessible. So as you come here, turn your palms up, let your head rest on your little pillow that you made. Your chin is slightly to your chest. The palms are open, shoulders are away from the ears. Close your eyes for a moment. So we started our practice with opening to the back side of the body with poses of surrender. And now we're uh, switching to the front side of the body with poses of acceptance. So your heart is wide open, your belly is wide open. This is a very vulnerable position for most mammals. We want to, most of us, we want to be able to protect ourselves. So we create an armor behind us, the shoulders get rounded over, we hold ourselves in, and this is the exact opposite, where we're opening our chest, we're vulnerable, we're accepting love, we're accepting what the universe has to offer. And as you rest here in this pose, just begin to really reflect on what it is that you want to manifest in 2024. And allow that to come from a place of loving yourself, not a place of where you feel lack, right? So there's a different feeling when we're asking the universe for things or events or feelings from a place of lack or from a place of love. So what is, what is, think about what you would what you would like to manifest in 24 thinking about reflecting on it from a place of love for yourself for you for the people around you for the community in which you live for the 
country in which you're from? What is something for the word peace? So see if you can kind of reflect on that for the next few minutes as you rest in this pose. I'm manifesting fill in the blank. I, and, and when you do it, um, see if you can do it from a place of present moment. Not, not that I will do this or I will manifest this, but I am manifesting. I am manifesting love. I am manifesting generosity, abundance, compassion, kindness. Breathe into your heart as you do this. And as you exhale out, see and visualize that whatever it is that you are wanting to manifest is already here. More peace, more peace of mind. And you find the feeling of that manifestation already present. Continue to send nice deep breaths into the belly. <sighs> and you can sigh it out and open mouth, exhale out. And two more times, please. Nice deep inhalation into the belly. And sigh it out. And one last time. Inhale. Long exhale. And gently begin to press yourself up. Take your time. There's no rush. Nice and easy. Gently lift the torso up. And then just come to the right side of your cheek for just a moment. Right side of your buttocks. And you can just kind of fold forward, fold to the side on your structure. Close your eyes for just a moment. We're just going to stay here briefly. Turning to those sensations of hibernation and self-care. Imagine it if you were a black bear and you're finding a nest to hibernate in for the next several months. How, how would that make you feel? What is it that you need in order to find yourself that relaxed? Gently come on back up and switch over to the other side. So just roll over to your left side and just rest for just a moment. Resting on your side, close your eyes. Let your spine get neutral. Breathe into that right side. And then gently press yourself back up. Put your um, structure to the side for a moment, please. Everything goes out to the side. And then really nice and slowly, um, come to the top of your mat and super, super gentle, press your hips up, lower the forehead down towards your shins. Keep the knees bent. Your hands can rest on the floor in front of you or you can have your elbows on top of your knees just kind of letting yourself uh, feel the sensation of having your hands on your own body let the head drop completely open and close your jaws 
And then if your hands are not on the floor, go ahead and put your hands on the floor. Keep the knees bent. Take the left leg back behind you. Bring the left knee down to the floor. Inhale, lift the chest up into your low lunge. And exhale, take your hips back to your heel. Come into your an easy, easy half split. Flex the right toes. Turn the inside edge of the right foot down and then toes come back up and turns the, turn the outside edge of the right foot. So kind of wiggling your toes side to side this way, inside edge to outside edge, inside edge and outside edge. Just it's a nice little rotation of that femur bone, the thigh bone and the hip socket. And then lower the right toes down, come into a low lunge. So lift that left knee off the ground and just move forward and back. Come to your tippy toes and then move back so your left heel is closer to the floor. Inhale, come to your tippy toes and move back. And inhale forward and exhale back. Inhale forward and exhale back. And then step that left foot next to the right foot. Inhale halfway up. Exhale again, fold forward. You can rest your hands on top of your thighs or hands on the floor. Close your eyes. Let the forehead just drop as you lean forward just a little bit towards your toes. And then place the hands back down on the floor. Send that right leg back behind you. Drop the right knee down to the floor. Inhale, lift the chest up. Exhale into a half split. Nice and easy. You can flex the left toes and drop the inside edge of that left foot and then outside edge of the left foot. So just go side to side, letting that femur bone rotate in the hip socket. You might feel a little more stretch going one direction or the other. Again, as always, if you want to pause anywhere, feel free to do that. And next time as you come forward, lower the toes down, tuck your right toes under, pick up the right knee off the ground, and then moving forward on your tippy toes and back and on forward so you feel that nice stretch in the calves as you move back. Inhaling forward, exhaling back. Inhale forward, exhale back. And last one, inhale forward, exhale back. This time, just place your hands down and send your left leg back behind you. Downward facing dog once again. And then drop your knees down to the floor. Inhale, send that right leg back and up. Exhale, step the right foot in between your hands. So, we're going to come into a supported um, pigeon prep. So, for this, I would highly suggest that you take your bolster and put it right on the inside of that right, uh, right foot. If you don't have a bolster, just take all your blankets and pile it up right there. And then you're going to let the top of your left thigh come towards your structure. So you get that sensation of support from your bolster. This allows you to lift the chest up a little bit more. And just pause here for a moment. You can rest your right elbow on top of your right thigh. Now you're feeling a deep stretch on top of that left thigh or the hip flexor. Right? So we really want to get, for the next couple of poses, we want to get deep into the hip flexor, deep in there. The psoas muscle is really an important muscle. It connects the lower body to the upper body, so extremities to your torso. And it's also the uh, kind of a, it has a fight or flight response. So when we're hearing a loud noise, we instantly, you know, contract our midsection. And that's the act of the psoas muscle. The psoas muscle contracts, and so we go into this kind of a so, uh, protecting ourselves. So now that we're not in any sort of danger and we're in a safe environment, 
We want to let that psoas muscle relax. And this is one of the really nice ways so you are giving the leg support and the way of that leg allows you to relax that muscle. Okay? So really lean onto that, onto that structure. You can pile up more blankets if you need it. And, and just lean your body forward as much as you can so you feel that stretch. We basically have um, two more poses before we finish. So this is really important if you can stay with me. Um, it'll be really beneficial. You'll feel a great, great release in the hip. And if, if, um, if you're not feeling it yet, um, try and do this after the class or maybe next time you feel that kind of tightness in the low back or even in the front of your thigh, just get into this pose and stay for, for a while. I suggest five minutes for um, the sake of time. We are going to move through it a little bit quicker, but it's really a good place to practice on your own. Be very, very beneficial. So you may notice that the sensations begin to move as you stay here for a little bit longer, you, you may feel it starting to move into the low back, um, the right side, the right hip. This is the beauty of our bodies. The connective tissues are all connected together to each other. So as you stay in a pose, the, um, it's almost like the fascia slowly begins to break down tension slowly begins to dissipate and move. So breathe into it. Stay with it. The moment where you feel like you want to come out of the pose, just stay there for a little bit longer. And then as you're ready, slowly take your time now. Please really, really super slow, begin to move your hip back and take that right knee back behind you, bring the right knee to the floor, move your structure towards the right knee, inhale, step the left foot in the, uh, to the top of your mat, let your right hip now drop down towards your structure, so give that right hip the support it needs. And your left elbow can rest on top of your left thigh. And just breathe into that right hip. You can close your eyes here if that helps. You can repeat a mantra in your mind if that helps. There's so many ways we can kind of trick our brains into releasing and letting go, trick our mind into the present moment. One is noticing the breath. You can also even have a candle in front of you and have your gaze to the candle that could be really trance-inducing or meditating. that right hip melt towards your structure. Let the shoulders move away from the ears. Constantly check and see if the shoulders are creeping up. And keep the shoulders down. There seems to be a direct connection between the, the tension in the hip flexor and the shoulders creeping up. And these are all connected to the vagus nerve. Um, vagus nerve is a, is a really important nerve that is, vagus means wandering, so it's kind of wandering through the body and uh, connects, and it connects to all the internal organs inside the body. 
So um, one of the benefits of reaching or tapping into that vagus nerve is the ability to relax. It's deeply relaxing once you feel that you have been able to stimulate the vagus nerve. Breathe into it. slowly begin to back up. So really take your time here. Put your structure to the side, please. Come to tabletop pose. Inhale, send the left leg back behind you. You can rotate that left leg in the hip socket a little bit. Maybe you like to shake that left leg out, bend it and straighten it. And then do the same thing with the right side. Extend the right leg out and then nice big rotations in the hip, or you can shake it out a little bit. If you like to, you can come into uh, downward facing dog, and just kind of walk the hips again, or you can come to a forward fold. Move organically, really listening to your body, what it needs at the moment. Bend the knees and straighten the knees. Rotate your hips side to side. See what your body wants right now. And then as you're ready, come all the way back down, please. Have a seat. Put your feet flat on the floor. Have your structure right next to you. So here, your options are either blocks. We're going to go into a supported um, bridge pose. You can go into blocks. And I like to take two blocks and put them right next to each other like so. Or a nice, yeah, gentler way is to have your bolster and a blanket or something next to you. We're gonna put our feet flat on the floor, lay down first, and then with your inhalation, lift the hips up, and as you lift the hips up, you uh, slide the bolster under your butt, just like this. Or if you don't have a bolster, just put your blocks together and slide the blocks under your hips. And so it's a little bit easier, softer with the bolster. Or you can put a bunch of pillows on top of one another and do this. And then from here, we're going to extend the leg straight. That's why it's a little bit easier to be on a bolster down blocks. Blocks might be a little bit too edgy. So make sure wherever you are, um, this is not on your kidneys, that it's directly under the hips. You. Extend both legs straight, or if this is, again, too edgy, you can bend one knee and straighten the other knee, and I'll let you know halfway through to switch sides. But I'm going to extend both my legs straight, palms are open, back of my head resting comfortably on the floor. Make sure you don't have anything in the back of your head because that flattens your neck out. So move any pillows that you may have under your head. Um, just have something under your hips. And then again, close your eyes. So we did that previous pose to open up into the hip flexors. Now that the hip flexors are a little more relaxed, we're really expanding into them. So this is a really great, great pose to let all those hip flexors, including the psoas muscles, to, ex uh, to relax. Again, close your eyes, send your breath to your belly and the hips, and exhale it out. And as a way of supporting myself here and as a way of staying present with my own breath and mind and body. I like to repeat the mantra in my head. Um, I, I always like to say, I inhale to nourish and I exhale to soothe. So inhale to nourish exhale to soothe 
Inhale to nourish. Exhale to see. Or you can just say those as you inhaling and exhaling. So as you inhale, you can just say nourish. As you exhale, you can say see. If you only have one leg and straight the other leg bend, go ahead and switch sides. And wherever you are, notice how relaxed you are. And notice how this simple act of self-care, self-reverence, is such a beautiful gift that is available to you anytime. the cause or culprit for health and healing. For mental health, for physical health. We human beings are not built to be chronically under stress. We're built to be able to run away from a bear if it's following us and then come in to rest and digest. But chronic stress continues to really plague us all. So giving yourself an hour a day, 45 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day of rest and relaxation not only helps your mental health but also physical health and both as you're ready gently begin to put your feet flat on the floor and with your inhalation lift your hips up slide your structure away and then slowly begin to lower the hips down again Drop your knees to one side and the other. And next time your knees are over to the left, just pause there for a moment for a nice twist. Extend the right arm above your head, turn your head to the right. Drop your knees over to the right. Turning your head to the left as you extend the left arm above your head. And then gently bring your knees to your chest, hug your knees in. You can rotate on your low back just to give yourself, your low back a nice little massage. And then once you're ready, we're gonna come into our final pose. So. For your Shavasana, I, um, I suggest that you put your bolster under your knees or you can put your blanket under your knees or blocks under your knees or something. Or you can have a blanket on top of you if you're cold, which I am right now. You can put your blanket right on top of you all the way. And once you get here, just close your eyes for a moment. Let your palms rest on your belly. Let the back of your head relax on the floor. 
take a nice deep breath into the belly. Feel the belly expand and exhale it out. And then just let yourself rest. Just relax into this final, final pose. As you let yourself rest, feel the sensations in your body. Feel how you're feeling right now. Notice, notice how you're feeling right now. Notice what it feels like to be inside your body. this peace that you have created If you have the time and you would like to stay here, please, I invite you to stay for as long as you like to. If you're ready to continue on with the rest of your day, maybe we can gently begin to draw your knees to your chest. Give yourself a big hug. If I were near you, I would give you a big hug too. So just draw your knees to your chest, feel my hug. And then as you notice which nostril you're breathing out a little bit easier, roll over to that side, pause for a moment. And then strengthen your top arm, press yourself to a comfortable seat pose, bringing your hands to the heart center. Bow down to yourself. Thank you so much for allowing me to guide you through your practice. This entire year, a year of trials, tribulations, ups and downs, I'm sure for everyone. We're all in this together. So give a big hug to someone near you, someone close to you showing them your love and appreciation for everything that you all went through. And looking forward to years ahead, especially this coming year. So thank you so much. Have a beautiful, beautiful day and happy new year to everyone. And I'll see you all next year. Namaste.